Now we have a somewhat spooky Pokemon for October because now we have Shift Tree, otherwise known as Hashtag, as that is Shift 3 on a keyboard. This Shifty Tree is the counterpart of Ludicolo and has been around since Generation 3. Those who played Ruby, Sapphire, and Emerald will remember Sydney's Shift Tree with great irritation as it spammed the infuriating combination of Double Team and Swagger. Today, we'll examine Shift Tree's impact on the competitive scene. And so we ask, how thrifty was Shift Tree? actually but before we start once again we have a video that is sponsored by the vpn service that i already use daily express vpn whenever you find yourself on an unencrypted connection you send out countless pieces of information for everyone to see this could happen, of course, while connected to public Wi-Fis, but even while you're at your own home, as your own internet provider is also able to see what websites you visit. However, a VPN provides a private connection and a virtual server that prevents anyone like governments, ISPs, and people connected to the same network as you from taking a look at the info you're sending out into the World Wide Web. ExpressVPN is the number one VPN service because of their ease of use and tons of premium servers located in many countries. And this feature in particular is very useful because some content like streaming services are blocked depending on where you are in the world. For example, Hulu is only available in the US, but with ExpressVPN, you can just watch shows on Hulu, like one of my favorite exclusives, Solar Opposites, even when you're in another country. You can do this and more when you sign up with ExpressVPN. Find out how you can get three months free by clicking the link in the description box below, expressvpn.com slash gaming. And in this video, we'll be going over these competitive formats. A typing full of weaknesses alongside poor bulk did not necessarily mean a Pokemon couldn't succeed in OU. For example, nobody would consider Blaziken a defensively sound Pokemon, but between its good enough speed and brutal offensive power, it carved out a niche. Shift Tree had Blaziken's exact speed stat, but its offenses unfortunately fell short of making it worthwhile in the standard metagame, as it was too slow to effectively Swords Dance, and it wasn't nearly threatening enough without a Swords Dance besides Explosion, but a non-boosted Explosion Pokemon wasn't hard to come by. Thus, Shift Tree dropped to Yu Yu. Its lack of useful physical moves and underwhelming speed combined with its frailty, which was preyed on by common Pokemon like Kangaskhan and Scyther, led it to shun Choice Band and Swords Dance sets, instead opting for a Sunny Day Chlorophyll set, which allowed it to bypass its speed issues and use its Grass Stab, which let it destroy common Pokemon like Walrein and Golem, while threatening defensive Vileplume with sun-boosted Hidden Power Fire. With Explosion, it could still take out just about anything, especially since the tier's normal resists were frightened of Solar Beam. Shift Tree's main issue was that it offered very little in the way of defensive utility, making it difficult to fit on teams. Needing a free turn to set up its sunny day could also be exploited, since grass weak Pokemon wouldn't be immediately threatened out by it. Nevertheless, with team support such as being fit on a team with other sunny day users like Offensive Vileplume, combined with heads up play, Shift Tree could pose a massive threat. Shift Tree also had a small niche in Ubers. Chlorophyll abuse was a lot easier when the sun was permanent and was set up by the amazing grass. On. With Sun active, it outsped the entire tier, even the occasional Deoxys speed, and threatened several of the metagame's most dangerous Pokemon with its choice band Shadow Balls, including Deoxys Attack, Mewtwo, and the Laddie Twins. Its powerful explosion removed even the bulkiest neutral targets, such as Lugia, Ho-Oh, and Deoxys Defense, as well as Kyogre attempting to replace the Sun with Rain. Now, Shift Tree had its issues, like massive frailty and struggling against the many bulky steals popular in the tier, necessitating either Magneton or lures like Overheat Ground and Hidden Power Fire Latios, but it was quite decent all in all. The fourth generation brought a bevy of gifts for Shift Tree. The new physical special split allowed it to use its stabs off of its superior attack stat. Gen 4 also provided Sucker Punch as Shift Tree's physical dark stab, who provided crucial priority in addition to power. Shift Tree prized this greatly, as it allowed it to surpass its often middling speed stat. Furthermore, Gen 4's addition of Life Orb was a blessing, giving Shift Tree the extra strength it so needed to one-hit KO as much as possible. Shift Tree didn't just receive physical buffs, though. On the special side, it received the brutally powerful Leaf Storm for a pure wall breaking set, as well as Nasty Plot, Gas Knot, and Dark Pulse for special sweeping. Now, it wasn't enough to leave any impact on OU, and it struggled to switch in safely in UU, with just about everything being able to hit it really hard. However, in NU, it was incredibly dangerous as a chlorophyll wall breaker or sweeper on Sun teams. Its stab Leaf Storm was one of the few attacks in the tier that could actually one hit KO Regirock. Its dark stab terrified Hypno, both of its stabs ripped through Slowking, and it was generally 
difficult to avoid losing at least one Pokemon thanks to its sheer power, to say nothing of its set versatility. For example, in a worst case scenario, it could explode on Vileplume, Porygon 2, or Regice to pave a sweeping path for its teammates. In a best case scenario, it could one hit KO them with a Nasty Plot or Swords Dance boosted attack and continue trucking through the opponent's team. Of course, it didn't even need to set up, since it naturally one hit KO'd so many of the metagame's defensive staples and could be quite content to simply throw around its powerful attacks, becoming even more dangerous with the extra coverage it could afford. Shiftry was still decent outside of Sun, especially as its Swords Dance boosted Sucker Punches ripped through faster Pokemon like Charizard and Manetric, but in the Sun was where it truly shone, pun intended, and it was a cornerstone of Sunny Day teams in Gen 4 and U. Once again, Shiftry also had a small niche in Ubers. Stab Dark Pulse was nice for cleaving through the many Ubers weak to it, such as the Laddie Twins, Giratina Origin, Lugia, and Mewtwo, while Grass Knot crushed Kyogre and opposing Groudon. Explosion would remove any Blissey hoping to wall its nasty plotted boosted attacks, as well as immediately threaten Pokemon like Palkia and Darkrai that could take unboosted hits. Shiftry certainly had its issues, as its frailty made it tough to get on the field, and it was completely walled by Dialga and Heatran unless it ran the vastly inferior Swords Dance set, which used Seed Bomb for Grass Stab and could no longer immediately one-hit KO Groudon, nor could it fit Explosion. This made for some debilitating trade-offs no matter what set it chose. However, Shiftry was still an NU Pokemon that was also viable in Ubers. That in and of itself was an impressive achievement, and honestly, there are aren't many cooler things in Pokemon than Mewtwo getting completely crushed by Shiftry. Despite Black and White bringing permanent sun to OU, Shiftry shared the same fate as many other chlorophyll grass types, having to suffer the indignity of watching Venusaur also get the ability and tower over everyone else. Shiftry's ability to instantly threaten the Laddie Twins was unique among chlorophyll Pokemon, but it wasn't enough for it to see any usage. Thus, it tumbled through the tearing rung down to NU once again, where it was absolutely terrific, even better than the previous generation. It really hated the fifth generation's explosion nerf, but funneled enough, it was easier to fit onto teams this time around. It wasn't restricted to use on Sun teams. Sure, it was good on those, but its ability to fit on other kinds of teams and not need Sun to set up for it was one of the things that made it excellent. Both Mixed and Swords Dance sets were quite difficult to handle. Shiftry was initially dismissed for completely being walled by Mandibuzz, but it dipped into its move pool and became a terrific Mandibuzz lure. Mixed sets could run Hidden Power Ice over Nature Power and two-hit KO the Buzzard on the Switch with Stealth Rock up, while Swords Dance sets could blow past it with a boosted Rock Slide. Being a grass type that could crush Mandibuzz was a trait unique to Shiftry, as was its Sucker Punch to prevent revenge kills from Scarfers. For example, Cacturn could do the latter, but not the former, and Saucebuck wished it could do either. Shiftry was criminally underrated in Gen 5 NU, and if the tier had had a longer lifespan, it almost surely would have shown why its untiered placement was a huge mistake. Many top players were making use of Shiftry's talents at the end of the generation, which didn't leave enough time for the rest of the player base to catch on. However, when it was used Shiftry proved it was a complete terror. Swords dancing as the Loma Mola ran in fear, then rock sliding the Mandibuzz and sucker punching the Charizard was a thing of beauty, almost as satisfying as leading off with Leaf Storm and KOing the Loma Mola staying in and trying to toxic on the Swords Dance, while still limiting faster Pokemon's ability to revenge kill thanks to Sucker Punch. The 6th generation brought fairy types, which was one more annoying thorn in Shiftry's side. But on the other hand, it brought a massively buffed Naka, which Shiftry loved, both for its power and the fact that it could now use it to hit those pesky steel types. Shiftry's access to Defog also expanded its utility, as it could now clear the field of hazards for its teammates, yes, namely Charizard. That means Shiftry did end up in NU once again, but that was just fine because once again, it was an excellent Pokemon. Its primary set was the offensive Defogger, which immediately threatened a vast amount of the tier with Leaf Storm and Knockoff, including crucial defensive staples such as Rhydon and Lantern, as well as offensive Pokemon like Samurott and Rotom. Once it hit the field, it could either capitalize on the switches it forced to clear hazards, or if that wasn't required, it could simply spam its stabs and punch holes in the other team, either with the power of Leaf Storm or with the item removing effect of Knockoff, which still hit quite hard. As always, Sucker Punch prevented faster Pokemon like Swellow from comfortably revenge killing it. Shiftry didn't even need to run the fog if its team didn't require it. For example, if it was used on a Garbodor spike stacking team, and could instead run Explosion, which was still quite powerful, but whose main purpose was to block opposing the fog, thus preserving the entry hazards that his teammates Garbodor laid down. Basically, that last slot was either using the fog or preventing the fog. Shiftry had expanded its game to become a critical part of the entry hazard war, and this increased utility meant it was used on more teams than ever before. Now, while the offensive Defogger or Exploder was its primary set, it certainly wasn't the only one. The Swords Dancer had never been more 
more powerful, as in addition to knockoff as Dark Stab, its Sucker Punch was no longer resisted by faster steals like Kling Clang. Shiftry could also run a solid Choice Scarf set, which had terrific surprise factor. It could outrun and rock slide an unsuspecting Charizard or Scyther, or destroy unwitting Jinx or Miss Magius with knockoff. Although the set being surprising was potentially game-breaking, it wasn't just good because it was surprising. Its increased speed meant it had more opportunities to threaten the opposing team. It also had the opportunity to use the more powerful Leaf Blade instead of Seed Bomb as its Grass Stab, which it couldn't on the Source Dance set since it was incompatible with Sucker Punch. Scarf Explosion was also incredibly useful in thwarting healthy Pokemon that would otherwise take a hit such as Lilligant, Magmortar, and Tauros. Overall, Orez and Yushiftri fit onto many a team with its terrific utility in either using or preventing Defog and pose an offensive threat with many different sets. As a result, it was one of the best Pokemon in the tier. Shiftree's a curious little fellow in doubles, just as in singles. There's no denying that Shiftree is a distinctly mediocre chlorophyll sweeper. Its base 100 attack is good but not great, and its terrible bulk leaves it incredibly weak to spread moves, such as Blizzard and Heat Wave. However, Shiftree is able to carve out a remarkably small niche for itself as the potential fastest fake out in the West. Under Sun, nothing can really outgun Shiftree, giving it a potential to disrupt the field with a consistency that can't be beat. Aside from that, Shiftree comes packing a nice little Swiss army knife, package of support tools, such as Tailwind and Knockoff. Shiftry thus can fit a curious role, a Pokemon who uses Sun to be an additional auxiliary support for its team, while still threatening some pressure purely by merit of its speed. Shiftry hasn't seen much top tournament usage in VGC history, largely owing to the superior options for a Sun abuser such as Venusaur and the difficulty of pulling Sun off in general. Nevertheless, it has a sparse few accolades to its name. Steven Brown III ran a Sun team for the spring portion of the 2015 season, placing fourth in the U.S. in the February International Challenge and barely missing out on top cut at Georgia Regionals as he bubbled due to opponent's win percentage. Key to his strategy was pairing Shiftry with Ninetales as opposed to the powerhouse Mega Charizard Y. Turn 1 Sun was vital for fake out pressure. That boost would then allow Steven's huge powerhouses such as Mega Salamence, Mamoswine, and Porygon Z to fire their artillery liberally, making for a hyper-offensive playstyle. The next year, Nick Yoroma managed to put Shiftry to the test in the unrestricted format as well, utilizing Utilizing it with the ever-present Groudon. Nick's team was a balanced mix of offensive threats such as Mega Salamence and Yveltal, along with other support mons to ensure his son could stay on the field, such as Crobat and Gastrodon. Shiftry appreciated being used alongside Yveltal, where the latter's ability Dark Aura could actually make an impact on the field and boost Shiftry's own offensive prowess. Other than that, however, Shiftry has stayed in the shadows. Even when Sun is viable, Shiftry isn't really where anyone's mind goes immediately, and it's hard to blame them. Shiftry brought its three Gen 6 and new sets over to Gen 7 PU. Despite being a tier lower, Gen 7's power creep was fairly extreme, and thus Shiftry wasn't able to significantly impact the metagame's landscape. Z Crystals made absorbing knockoff easier, and Sucker Punch's power nerf was not helping things. However, despite its shortcomings, Shiftry was still a decent Pokemon. Avoiding knockoff's item removing effect was still not easy for most teams, and Leaf Storm was as strong as ever, especially with how most of the tier's grass resist didn't want to eat a knockoff. It was a solid offensive defogger since it threatened common stealth rockers in Mudsdale and Regirock. It could also ditch the fog and function as an excellent Alolan Sandslash lure with low kick. The set's main issue was strong competition with Skunk Tank, the tier's premier offensive defogger who didn't pack knockoff or scare stealth rockers like Shiftry did, but brought an absolute ton of utility to its team with Pursuit, the ability to check the excellent victory bell, and the nasty parting gift of Aftermath. Shiftry's advantages were still useful though. It just wasn't as easy to slap on a team as Skunk tank was. As a Swords Dancer, Shiftree struggled to stand out in a tier packing the mighty Absol, and his Choice Scarf set was also largely outdone by Skunk Tank. As a result, Shiftree dropped to untiered. This was probably a little on the harsh side, seeing as Shiftree was perfectly usable, but those are the cruel whims of the tiering rung for you. At the time of this video, Shiftry is in RUBL. It was among the first wave of bans in RU when the tier was still in its fledgling stages, as it was an absolutely ferocious Sunsweeper. Generation 8 gave it two incredible moves. The first was Solar Blade, a physical Solar Beam counterpart that was even more powerful at a shocking 125 base power. The second was Heat Wave, whose scorching power and coverage complemented Shiftry's stabs beautifully. In addition, the lack of Z-Crystals and Megas made its knockoff even more brutal, topping this monstrous 
set off was Growth, which was a simultaneous Swords Dance and Nasty Plot under Sunlight, and allowed Shiftry to shred through teams with absurd ease, leading to its swift ban. Shiftry has shifted its Sun Sweeping focus to Yu Yu, as it can be quite threatening, but it also has several notable struggles. Its Solar Blade can be interrupted by Gigalith Sandstream, meaning it has to either risk that or downgrade to Leaf Blade. It also has trouble fitting all its moves. It needs Focus Blast, as it's otherwise completely walled by Incineroar, but also means it now has to choose between Growth or Heat Wave. Without Growth, it will struggle to achieve the one-hit KOs it needs against common Pokemon like Sylveon, but without Heat Wave, it is completely blanked by Galarian Weezing as well as a Scavalier. That said, Shiftry is still a terrifying threat if it gets going, as it naturally cleaves through a large number of common defensive Pokemon, such as the Slow Twins, Rotom Wash, and Celebi, as well as naturally destroying common offensive Pokemon like Keldeo, Terrakion, and Golurk. It's not quite good enough to be a legitimate Yu Yu Pokemon, but it has its place in the tier. And that's it, so how good was Shift Tree actually? Well, it's been a lower tier lifer, brandishing its fierce offensive capabilities. Its defensive drawbacks were debilitating, but it was worth using in spite of them thanks to its excellent blend of power and coverage, especially under sunlight. Its threat level under sun gave it a niche in Ubers a couple of times as well. The 8th generation buffed it enough to where it enjoyed being too powerful for a tier for the first time, as it completely dominated Ryu for the short duration it was allowed. See Game Freak, sometimes all it takes are a few new moves. All in all, Shift Tree has been a good Pokemon, but not exactly a spooky one since it gets more powerful in the sun. Whatever, it's a dark type. Thanks for watching, everyone. And as always, if you liked the video and you want to see more, be sure to subscribe to False White Gaming for more weekly Pokemon content. And in the comments, I want to know what do you think about competitive Shift Tree? What would you give it to make it OU, for example, or to give it something over Venusaur? Also, thank you so much to our patrons for continued support of our videos, and thank you to everyone else watching as well. And follow my crew on these social media platforms. And that's all I got. See you next time, everyone.